in the last episode, we were talking about how we're going to earn the half billionists that we need to buy all the reaction formulas and all of the blueprints that it will take to build the things we need to build, to build the things we need to build, to build a Cineval. Half a billionist. We broke a hundred million. That's still a pretty long way to go. But bounties and mission rewards are not the only way to earn esque within the constraints of our rules. Back in episode 34, I was killed by a hawk while trying to run a limited sleeper cache. And I said then that I was hoping to get another opportunity to show you how to run these. Well, I popped through a wormhole to Genesis and I found a limited sleeper cache in a dead end low sec system that is completely empty. So let's give it a go. This is Bill. Bill wants to build a Cineball and join the Angel Cartel cause in Zarzak, but he's not making it easy on himself. Limited sleeper caches are data relic sites. You need the data analyzers and the relic analyzers in order to hack them, and the rewards in them can be quite good. But a lot of explorers are kind of scared of them, as with ghost sites, because the sleeper caches can kill you. They come in three different varieties. The limited cache, the standard cache, and the superior cache. The limited cache is the only one that you can actually run without taking any damage. A Tech 1 Exploration Frigate, a Covert Ops ship, can 100% run this site. With the standard or superior cache, you need a larger ship, or at least a stronger ship, because those sites will do damage to you even if you're doing them properly. The limited sleeper cache is kind of unique in that even though it does have environmental hazards in it, if you're careful, you can avoid all of them. So the first thing you'll see when you warp in here is that this acceleration gate is not active. We've landed at a spot in space with one can. This can is one that we need to hack, but it doesn't actually have any contents. Successfully hacking this can is just going to turn on the acceleration gate, which lets us into the rest of the site. If we fail the first hack, we have a couple of minutes to try and hack again. But if we fail the first hack, and then don't succeed in hacking it before the timer runs out, the site will despawn, and that's it. So for the sake of the video, let's hope that I can get this on the first try. This will be a mid-level hack, the entry can. There will be some harder hacks later in the site. Now, given that we're in a Tech 1 Exploration Frigate with a Tech 1 Data Analyzer, and just one Memetic Algorithm Bank giving us a slight boost to our hacking strength, this is going to be difficult for us, but it should be doable. There we go. Rule of six tells us that we've now found the vicinity of the command node. And I think we have enough health left to take it down. And we're in. It seems the enigmatic hyperflux generator creates a small wormhole-like rift. But what lies beyond? What lies beyond is the rest of the limited sleeper catch. Let's go. Now, the first thing we're going to want to do is take a good look around. There are hazards in this site. And as soon as we start moving, we're putting ourselves at risk of activating them. You're generally going to want to be on an overview tab that shows everything. We'll see several cans here, the Mangled Storage Depot, Mangled Storage Depot, Dented Storage Depot, Dented Storage Depot. These are the cans that will actually have the loot in them. And there's some interesting rare loot in here, including uncommon storyline blueprints. But the main thing for us is that these sites, these cans, will have in them sleeper data libraries, which can be sold to NPCs for ISK. And the ISK rewards of a limited sleeper cache can really be disproportionately large compared to how difficult it is to run. The one mangled storage depot closest to the warp-in point is totally safe. The rest of these have environmental effects that we're going to need to be very careful about. The first thing to notice is that this dented storage depot here is inside this cloud. This cloud is an area of effect damage field. If we fly in there, our exploration frigate will pretty quickly be destroyed. 
but the remote pressure control unit here allows us to temporarily turn it off. So that's how we're going to get to this can. These other mangled cans here, they're safe once we're next to them. However, as we're flying towards them, we're going to have to watch out for these other damaged clouds that you can see, as well as these plasma chambers. The plasma chambers will explode doing massive area of effect damage, while massive on the ter in terms of a frigate, enough to kill us, if we get too close to them while going too fast. The closer you are to them, the slower you have to be going, so we definitely don't want to micro-warp drive around through the main part of this site. But we'll deal with those third. First, we're going to open this safe can. Now, the nice thing about these storage depots, the reward cans, is that you have as many chances as you want to hack them. Unlike in regular data sites where if you fail twice, they explode, these cans will just let you try again and again. Now, all of these storage depots are opened with relic analyzers, whereas the site itself and the special cans that manipulate the site are opened with data analyzers, which is why you need both in order to do this. Now, these will again be somewhat difficult hacks, but as I said before, we can try them over and over again, so it's not too much of a problem if we mess this up. Let's try not to. But we can just keep trying again. And we're in. So these neural network analyzers are sleeper libraries. This will just turn into if. And then this is just a random item drop, which can happen in these sites. One and a half million to start. Now. That's the easy can out of the way. The next thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to move over to this remote pressure control unit, which will allow us to turn off the area of effect around the dented storage depot in here. The dented storage depots are a level up from the mangled. They will be slightly harder hacks, and they also have better loot in them. So the two dented storage depots in this site are our main targets. You can see this is tucked in the middle of a wrecked ship, which is emanating this damaged cloud. If we fail a hack on this pressure control unit, we can again try again and try again, but each time we fail this hack, we will take damage. Let's give it our best shot. Okay, we found the core. Now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to make sure that we are prepared to rush this dented storage depot because as soon as we succeed this hack the area of effect cloud is going to drop and we will have about three minutes to get in hack that can and get back out before the area of effect cloud reappears we have a damage control is the full extent of the tank on our probe so we won't be able to take very much time in that cloud we really want to be fully out of it before it comes back up so far, we've taken zero damage in the site, and if you do everything perfectly, you can take zero damage, but it's a good idea to have at least one tank module so that if you mess up, you have a chance of surviving. Okay. Cloud is safe. We zoom in. Relic analyzer. We're going to try this hack twice. If we fail twice in a row, then what we're going to do is we're going to fly back over to the remote pressure control unit because that can is outside of the area of effect field. And then we can hack it again to get another chance at this. So we'll take two attempts and then we'll cut our losses. But nope, the first attempt's in. Can is open. 4.6 million is worth of loot. Let's fly back over to our remote pressure control unit to safety before we take a long look at it. So these isotropic deposition guides we're not going to be using. These are used for building T3 ships, so that value is not really applicable to us. We also got polarized a polarized blueprint, which is a special kind of Tech 2 blueprint. It's going to be difficult for us to build. But it's interesting. The contents of that can are probably not especially useful to us in our Kruzak run. 
But as you can see, the estimated value is pretty high. And you can see the warning here in local that we have 60 seconds now until this cloud reappears. That would probably be your moment to notice that if you're in the middle of a hack, finish it quickly and get out. Now, the other dented storage compartment in this site, there's two hazards. The first is this cloud that you just need to fly around. If you if you just flew directly at the door at the storage depot, you'd be going right into the cloud. The second thing is this active force field generator. But there's not, in fact, a force field up yet. If we get too close to this depot, the force field will pop up and push us away, and we won't be able to get to it without destroying the force field, which requires over 150 DPS, which we certainly don't have. The way you prevent that from happening is by hacking the remote defense grid unit. However, if you fail that hack, then the cans will explode and can potentially destroy your ship. At the very least, you'll be losing loot. But there's a third way. The third way is you can just burn into this can so fast that you get next to it before the force field goes up, and then you're already inside it. And as long as you don't leave the force field, you can sit there and take as long as you want to hack the can. You need a micro warp drive for this. You need to be careful that you're approaching it from a direction that won't bring you too close to any of these plasma chambers, which, as I said, will explode if you go too fast near them. So we are 28 kilometers from the closest plasma chamber. 7 to 10 is pretty much the danger zone where you have to start flying slowly. From this perspective, we can burn towards this can at max speed, and because of our inertial stabilizer, we should be able to come to a halt fast enough to not slingshot out past the edge of the cloud. This doesn't always work, but let's give it a go. There's the force field. And we're in. All right. We should be able to hack this in peace. Ah, these guys, so annoying. We just can't even kill them with the equipment that we have. With a Tech 2 analyzer and a Cove Ops ship, it would be a whole different story. Okay, try again. There we go. Use all of our utilities here. And it's dead. Let's see what this can has for us. Four million of which we can just straight up sell to NPCs. This is not bad. Not bad at all. Okay, now we're going to fly out of the force field. And we won't be able to get back in. We're flying out in a direction that's sort of away from the rest of the site. Okay, so we've left the force field behind. Now, there are still three mangled storage depots that we want to get access to here. This one over here seems to be the most outside of the danger zone, so we'll go for it first. Remember, though, we have to avoid these clouds. And we also need to make sure that no plasma chamber is getting within 12, 10 to 12 kilometers of us. We can use our micro warp drive now because all the plasma chambers are plenty far away from us. But as soon as we get within about 20 kilometers of a plasma chamber, we're going to want to turn off that micro warp drive and start being much more deliberate about how and where we fly. You can get right up against them if you're going like 100 meters per second. You can get within about 5 kilometers of them traveling at this 400 meters per second that we do without a prop mod on. Where is that plasma chamber? That's uh, debris. That's a plasma chamber that's already exploded. Where's the nearest actual plasma chamber? 24 kilometers away. We're pretty safe. And now we're within hacking range. There we go. Mangled storage container open. Rocket science. We're 13 million-esque. I don't think we need that. Although these skill books, if you want to do invention, you will need these skill books, and they cost about 10 to 15 million-esque from NPCs as well. 
we can't sell this to anybody, but there is a chance. There is a chance if we go for T2 rigs or modules at some point, that we'll be happy to have this. And, more importantly, 3.3 million isk of blue loot that we can just sell straight to NPCs. Now let's see, where's our next can? Okay, so it's right on the edge of that damage cloud, so we have to be careful with how we approach it for that reason. If we flew straight at it, we'd go through the blue damage cloud, which, which we don't want either. Either, So we're going to fly straight up and get some distance from the hazards. And we're also going to be very cautious about this plasma chamber here as we're making our approach. The nearest unexploded plasma chamber to us right now is 26 kilometers away. I think we can safely micro-warp drive up a little bit, get some distance. And then we're going to fly over the top of the site and try and figure out what angle we can come at so that we don't end up flying into the orange cloud. We're just going to stop here for a second. This angle looks pretty good. We just need to be careful about how quickly we're moving as we get closer to this plasma chamber here. So I'm actually going to lock it so that we can very easily monitor, just at a glance, how close to it we are. We need to be within 5,000 meters of the mangled storage depot to hack it. And I'm pretty sure that we can get that close without touching this orange cloud. And it looks like we won't get within 10 kilometers of the plasma chamber approaching from this angle. So we don't have to worry too much about our speed. Okay, we're going to come to a stop about here. Okay, we'll hack it from here. There we go. Sneak within 2,500 meters. Still taking no damage from the cloud. With some regular loot. Oh, we didn't loot that depot. That's just a mistake on our part. Okay, safely in our hold. Now there's one can left that's of interest to us. And it's pretty out in the middle of nowhere too. We can micro warp drive off this way pretty safely. Away from the clouds, we're going to get so there's no hazards in between us and the can. And then we're just going to approach it slowly, keeping the can between us and that plasma chamber. So we don't get any closer to the plasma chamber than we strictly need to. Now we're going to lock up this. And how far is the storage? Okay, the plasma chamber is 41. We're going to start approaching the mangled storage depot under no prop power. The main thing we want to do here is keep as much distance as we can from this plasma chamber. We're going to have to get within the 10 kilometer danger zone to hack the depot. But at 430 meters per second, we should be safe from detonating. It looks like we're going to be about 9 kilometers away from the plasma chamber when we get within the looting range of this mangled storage depot. So just fly in nice and slow. No sudden movements. And that barrel won't blow up in your face. Good. Okay, so we found the final node, but we can't actually take it out unless we get a useful utility from one of these. Oh, will that do it? I think that'll do it. Boom. Another four and a half million isk worth of sleeper, sleeper data libraries and a gyro stabilizer, which will be useful if you ever decide to fly another Mimitar ship at any point in our lives. And that's it. Now all we're going to do now is we're going to fly directly away from the site with no prop mod on just to get a safe distance before we activate our warp drive. Because I believe that if you try and initiate warp too close to a plasma chamber, 
that in and of itself can actually trigger them. And we don't want to, after hacking that whole site, without taking a single point of damage, the last thing we want to do is get blown up by a plasma chamber as we're warping out. Okay, we should be safe to make warp drive now. Good. And here's the site. Completely hacked. Limited sleeper cache down. Every single piece of loot acquired. Not a single point of damage taken. Maybe 25 minutes in total. Would have taken less time if I wasn't explaining everything as I went. You can do them about 15, I think, pretty reliably once you've got a couple under your belt. And it's easily, easily 30 to 40 million s worth of loot. And sometimes you get really lucky. So if you've been avoiding limited sleeper caches, when you're out exploring because you're scared of them or you don't know how to run them hopefully this video will give you a little bit of confidence and in the future you'll realize that actually they aren't that scary at all now i just hope the wormhole that brought us out here hasn't closed behind us we're safely back in albrez and i've pulled all of that other random data and relic loot out of my hold leaving only what we got from the limited sleeper cache you can see here it's estimated at 36 million isk in value which is pretty decent for 20 minutes now for us in the challenge it's really this 13 million isk that we're going to be getting direct value from also some of these guns will be of value to us we can reprocess the dual 650 and it gives pretty good resources and this rocket science skill book is used to build all kinds of tech 2 stuff which we might never actually build, but then we might. And if we do end up going that route, this is going to save us 15 million isk that it would cost us to buy this skill book from NPCs. So overall, we came out pretty well. And I would say that this is a average to maybe slightly below average pull from a limited sleeper cache. And the outliers can be intense. It's not unheard of to get like 50 million isk cans of sleeper data libraries in those sites and if you're not doing the challenge some of the storyline blueprints that you can find in there sell for hundreds of millions of isk on contract so if you find them and you know how to do them you should probably be running sleeper caches and while i'm out here at a thucker mix station in syndicate nullsec the good 12 million isk i will take it According to my calculations, there should be asteroids above this Athenor here in Albrus. Those look like asteroids to me. Coasite gives silicates, of which we need 300 brimful. We can probably knock them off right now. <laughs> 